All right, here we are starting off our week. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, how many pallets can you put in your truck? And which is a good question. Um, if I didn't have anything in this truck, if I didn't have anything in here, no sleeper, no materials or nothing, um, I could probably get seven pallets. I'd have to leave space for a pallet jack or, or something, but I can get seven regular pallets in there. But however, I'm usually picking up stuff, uh, usually picking up stuff like this. Um, maybe pieces of equipment or, you know, you never know what's gonna go in there. Uh, my 80% of the time, it's not uh, a pallet. All right, and this is usually, this This could probably, well, it could go in my box, but I'm gonna put it on the back. It'll be easier to tie down and keep secure. Okay, we are done with the first parcel, and this is what it looks like. Power buggy. <clears throat> now, probably a chain would have done better, passed it through there, but there's soft edge, soft corners on the, with using the strap. Threw one over this bucket because it's a tilt bucket, and then one over the step right there. Uh, the weight on this is probably isn't even a thousand pounds. So, let's so go to the next stop getting loaded here this place makes cannabis products and it's obvious they're getting high off their own supply decided to put this in the box it looks like a pretty important piece of equipment here so I booked this load is to pick up a uh, portable potty weighs about 900 pounds pick it up Phoenix, take it over to Tucson, a couple hours, bing bang, done, make a few hundred dollars. Well, I pulled up and the guy in front of me says, hey man, I've been waiting here for two hours. And I was like, you are kidding me. So, uh, I don't know if I just got here at the right time, but it only took about an hour to get in through the gate. But now I've got to go up here and register at the office and then get back in a line somewhere and uh, hopefully not have to wait in the, the main line again. I'm here at the auction and uh, oh man, I got extremely lucky. I thought it was gonna be hours and hours to get in here. But fortunately this agent had his stuff together and made me an appointment. It took about an hour to get through the gate and I had to go sign, get the release, but uh, as I was getting through the gate, they said, do you have an appointment? Yes, I gave them my appointment number, and they said, okay, when you come back around, there are two lines, one for people with appointments and one without. Thank God, because people that didn't have an appointment, that line is about a half a mile long, so we're getting loaded within five minutes of pulling up to that line. All right, here's one of the problems with doing partials, especially on a bumper pull trailer. And this has happened to me a couple times. <clears throat> the concern is when you have two partials on there, say like my trailer is 20 feet long and I go pick up a partial that weighs 2000 pounds. Um, and it's 10 feet long. I put it on the front. I go pick up another partial that's 2000 pounds and it's 10 feet long and I put it on the back. I go drop off the first one and it happens to be the one on the front. 
So now I'm left with 2,000 pounds on the back of my trailer. Most places, you know, if it's something uh, manageable, they will move that for you to the center of the trailer or the front of the trailer, wherever you want it. Some of these places won't, and that's what we have here. <clears throat> So I just unloaded a power buggy up there and they refused to move this. Now this thing only weighs 900 pounds. All they would have to do, you can see it has a place for forks. All they would have had to have done was lift it straight up and I would have backed up about six feet. Um, they, they refused to do it. So now I have all the weight on the back of the trailer. Uh, I only have to go about 60 miles but my concern now is that uh, if I go over too many big bumps, this could un unhook. Uh, not likely to happen. I've got a, a pin in there, a lock, but it could happen. Um, so I have, just have to take it easy. Um, what I need to do is, is uh, put me a winch on here and I can winch these things forward myself. But. This is pretty cool. I passed this road a thousand times. Take exit 318, then turn right onto East Dragoon Road. I always see that Dragoon Road. I always wondered what was down there. So guess what? I have a delivery down here. We're gonna find out. Well, made it to Dragoon, Arizona. There's nothing out here. It's a few little buildings and some mountains and a train track. Uh, so I guess I wasn't missing anything. It's still pretty out here, but uh, nothing to do. Got the porta potty delivered here in Dragoon, Arizona, and there's nothing out here. The guy I delivered to, he happened upon the property. It's a historical building, and he's opening a it's like a country store and an uh, B and B. So I wish him the best of luck. Um, he's out in the middle of nowhere for sure. But he says that the train tracks, which are right in front of his driveway, um, there's 60 to 90 trains per day that come through here. <laughs> and I don't know if I believe that, but uh, he says they take so long that traffic sometimes gets backed up so he thinks he'll get some business off the traffic from the train being stopped but just a, it's a town in the middle of nowhere I don't know how these people make a living out here because there's we're over an hour away from Tucson and that's the only town near here but just what a an old old west town You would picture what it you know just what an old west town looks like Got this building here i'm not sure what's going on with that is that jesus or a wizard and that's his store right over there and he doesn't know how to drive a tractor He got it unloaded, but he can't move the tractor anywhere. All right, let's get out of here and head home. Okay, let's talk about my short week last week. <clears throat> After I got done doing the, the partials, I went to Vegas and did a reset. Normally, I have trouble finding any kind of good load coming out of Vegas. Coming back to Texas, it's almost impossible. So what I usually do is take a couple of uh, small partials either to Southern California or Phoenix area. And uh, from there, again, anything coming back to Texas is either not there or it's not paying very much, but this is how it worked out this week. So um, I got done with my, um, my reset on Thursday morning. And so <clears throat> I found two loads coming from Vegas, uh, two partials, one going to Phoenix and, oh, 
did that wrong. One going to Phoenix, one going to Tucson. Um, and at the same time, I found one coming from Phoenix going over to Dragoon, which is just past Tucson. So uh, from there, I was just going to go home because at that point, I didn't think I was going to find anything. El Paso was just a real dead zone for cargo vans and box truck, anything really. So I was, I'd planned on just you know, driving all the way deadheading home from there. And, but I didn't give up though. I always, I'm always on that load board checking. And as I'm going through El Paso, I right at the heart of El Paso, I said, I'm going to check the load board one last time. I got on there, a load fell on there from El Paso to Houston, it happened to be an expedited load. And, um, I just barely, barely had enough hours to get it there. They wanted it there the next morning. And so, and actually had a, a decent rate for El Paso, a thousand bucks. So I did one from El Paso to Houston and I was home Saturday afternoon about, I think I got home about one o'clock, something like that. So for two and a half days, I made $2,200 on about 1,500 miles. Um, I figured that up in my head. That may not be quite right, but four loads total, uh, four partials. Uh, the, la the last one, this one from El Paso to Houston was a box that weighed about five pounds. So somebody really needed something really bad. It come out to be about $1.46 a mile. I uh, used $334 in fuel from you know, from New Mexico into Texas. Gas is cheap. Well, not cheap, but it's cheaper than most places. And so, um, you know, net profit, you know, after fuel is $1,865 for that two and a half days. I uh, have to get my DOT redone today. It's been two years already. And so I'm going over to do that. And then I might start looking at the load boards for... Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday picking up something so that could increase this um, but might end up taking several days off we'll see uh, but not a bad uh, few days especially coming from that direction that direction is really difficult uh, to pick up some good pain uh, not only to pick up loads but to pick up something with a decent rate on it so not a bad couple of days